After many years of waiting, Young Justice Season 3, Outsiders, is set to be released in 2018. And I've put together a list of 10 supervillains who need to be in Young Justice Season 3. Number 10, Kalabak. Kalabak is the first of Darkseid's children and his heir. I was first introduced to the character on the Justice League and Justice League Unlimited animated TV series. And to be honest, he comes across as a bit of a joke and as someone Superman can easily beat up. Father! Father, did you see? Be still, you fool. I'm not blind. Then I saw his new 52 design and he was turned into a brutal and violent killing machine. And with Darkseid being one of the main villains of season 3, his son has to make an appearance and I for one am looking forward to seeing his redesign for the show. All that can really be said is that he is super strong and pretty tough to the point of being semi invulnerable and he's also very ruthless, much like Darkseid. And that's all there is to him really, he's not exactly known for his intellect, just his brute force. And along with him of course we would see all of Darkseid's army and all the superpowered beings in that army. Number 9, Catwoman. Catwoman has made no appearance on the show so far, and to be fair this is Young Justice, not the Batman show, so she isn't compulsory. That being said, we have had three Robins on the show, one dying, one becoming Nightwing, and the other still being a Robin on the show, and likely in season 3 we will see the introduction of Damian Wayne as the fourth Robin. I'll be in my room. Add to this that we also have Batgirl on the team and, well, there's a lot of Bat characters there, so adding Catwoman would make sense. There is also a bit of a lack of female villains, and the only light member to be female is Queen Bee. Catwoman is an interesting character, not only as a love interest for Bruce Wayne, but because she walks the line of being a criminal and a hero. Her world is not so black and white, and this makes her a compelling character and she would be a great addition to the show, and perhaps as a love interest for Nightwing or one of the other Robins. Now obviously in that scenario we'd have to have it that she'd never been with Bruce Wayne, otherwise that would be a little bit weird and almost incestuous. Even though they're not related, some of them are adopted sons and it would just be a bit weird. But if she had never been with Bruce Wayne and was just a younger version of Catwoman who was on the team, it could be a very interesting take on the character. Number 8, Sinestro. Sinestro was the most decorated member of the Green Lantern Corps, until it was revealed that he was using his power to deal out unfair and violent punishments <laughs> and taking over his home planet of Korrigar. Hal Jordan defeated him and he ended up leaving the Green Lantern Corps and creating the Sinestro Corps, which have the same abilities as the Green Lantern Corps members, but instead of willpower, they are powered by fear. Since the Young Justice show has been opened up to the alien races of the galaxy, an alliance between the Light and Sinestro seems logical and would be quite a plague to watch unfold. I also wouldn't mind seeing him start as a Green Lantern, or even perhaps as a younger Sinestro who joins the team and then his violent methods are discovered and when confronted about it he flees, starts his own land core and joins the light. Number 7, Deadshot. Deadshot endeared himself to us in our hearts by starring in the Suicide Squad comic book, and we learnt that there was a lot more to him than just being a good shot with a gun and a mercenary. Unfortunately, the movie adaption of Suicide Squad was a bit of a rubbish film, though Will Smith's portrayal of the character was pretty on the mark. He appears as a simple character in some respects, he is the world's best shooter and can shoot impossible targets and never miss a shot. He uses this skill as a mercenary and hitman, but underneath this, the only thing he really cares about is to take care of his daughter. I want full custody of my daughter, all right? And her mom can have, like, supervised visits, but her stank-ass boyfriend can't come. Donnell can't come. Donnell's out. This makes him a more relatable character, as he is not driven just for personal gain, but to provide a life for his child that he himself never had. And then I want her to go to college, like Harvard or Yale. Ivy League. Ivy League, yeah, one of them big joints, you mm -hmm. know? And uh, if she can't cut it and her grades start slipping, I mean, you white people that thing. Mm -hmm. And if the Young Justice show has its own version of the Suicide Squad, then it has to feature him as the leader. And I, for one, think it would be a brilliant plotline for the show. Number six, Gorilla Grodd. Gorilla Grodd has actually already featured in the Young Justice universe, but only in the comics. He has yet to make the leap from the Young Justice comic book to the Young Justice TV series, and the time seems to be right. For those who don't know, Gorilla Grodd is a super smart gorilla with psychic powers. 
in the Young Justice comic book, the gorillas start out as just ordinary gorillas, and then the light member, the brain, experiments on them and turns them into super smart and psychic powered apes. This means he is not only powerful enough, both with his psychic powers and his physical strength, to be a threat to the team, but also smart and cunning enough and ambitious enough to become a member of the light as well. Today, the world welcomes its new masters. The Society! Number 5. Talia Al Ghul As I've said, there is not enough female villains in the show, at least in my opinion, and Talia Al Ghul makes perfect sense to be on the show. Yes, her father Ra's al Ghul was killed on the show, so you might think that she would be his natural successor, but Ray will be put into a Lazarus prayer and restored to life. The master will be resurrected! However, Talia is a key figure in the League of Shadows, and the fact that she has not featured in the show so far is a bit odd, considering how large a role the League of Shadows plays in the show. That being said, Talia does feature in the comic book and is actually responsible for the creation of the Young Justice version of Clayface. For more details on this, see my other video on Clayface's origin. A link to it is in this video's description. Number 4. Doomsday Superman is the most powerful superhero, and as such, he can be a little bit dull simply because you never believe that he could actually be hurt in any real way. He is invulnerable after all, and his powers seem to have nearly no limit. But Doomsday actually once overpowered and even killed Superman. <laughs> this means that he is a very, very deadly threat. Now, one of the great things about Young Justice is its mature themes and content, and very intelligent, methodical planning on the supervillain's part. But it never hurts to have a bit more blunt force and power, and blunt force and power pretty much sum up Doomsday. He is on par with Superman in levels of strength, if not greater, and all but invulnerable. That's pretty much all there is to him though, he's just a ridiculously powerful being. So he would never be a planning villain, think of him more as a deadly weapon to be set on a target, but he brings a great deal of power to the light side, and a credible threat is always needed to make the drama of the show realistic. Number 3. General Zod Speaking of credible threats, they don't come much better than a man who has the same powers as Superman. General Zod was one of the few Kryptonians to survive the destruction of Krypton, and is a violent dictator. Give him the powers of Superman as well, and you've got one of the biggest threats to humanity there is, as General Zod would willingly turn the entire human race into his slaves. This planet will be mine. However, I imagine that the show may change Zod's character so that he's not solely Superman's enemy, but Superboy's. He could be another clone of Superman, but with more of Superman's powers, much like Match was, but without having the disadvantage of being insane. And he could be the answer to the question of why the Light never made another Superman clone. Perhaps they did, and it's General Zod, and he was too powerful to control, and that's why they never produced another Superman clone. They were just too much hassle. <laughs> Number 2. Harley Quinn We've seen the Young Justice version of the Joker, but so far we haven't seen a version of Harley Quinn. Now, she is mainly known as the Joker's crazy girlfriend, and in some versions of the character, this is pretty much all she is. But Harley Quinn is one of the most famous supervillains of all time, who has also been a hero from time to time. With this crew on the job, what could go wrong? I know I'm the new guy, but you really trust Harley? She's a different person since Joker died. Mostly. And if the show made a younger version of Harley Quinn, she could even leave the service of the Joker and join the team. Even if it's only to infiltrate the team for Mr. J, this would still be an interesting story to watch unfold. And considering how ridiculously popular Harley Quinn has become in the past few years, it makes perfect sense for her to be in the third season. Number 1. The Reverse Flash The Reverse Flash is basically an evil version of the Flash. He has all of the Flash's superpowers and is from the future, which means he has knowledge of the future and understanding of future science. So he's both super smart and super fast. 
Combine this with a ruthless attitude and a blind hatred of the Flash, and you've got a deadly and compelling enemy. And so far there doesn't seem to be a speedster on the enemy's team. Considering the good guys have the Flash, Impulse and Kid Flash, this doesn't really seem fair. And yes, I know Kid Flash is dead and so he doesn't technically count at the moment, but as I've said in my other videos, we all know that he'll be coming back in Season 3. Check out the links in this video's description for more details on how he could come back. But I think the Reverse Flash would be perfect for this show. He can travel through time and even dimensions in some versions of his character. <laughs> and his powers could be what the Light are using to bring new metahumans into the show. And that is the 10 supervillains who need to be in Season 3 of Young Justice. Do you agree with this choice of supervillains? And are there any others that you want to see in Season 3? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those of you who've donated to Needlemouse Productions' page on Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that's helping us to bring you more videos each week and to raise funds to adapt comic book stories into animated short films. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.